Hello friends, today we learn the topic of triangulation adjustment that is a spherical axis. The spherical axis contains area of the spherical triangle, sides of the spherical triangles. As we know that in case of the plane surveying, we have to consider the surface as a plane. But in case of the geodetic surveying, we have to consider the curvature of the earth. In plane triangles, all the addition of the all the angles is 180 degree. Similarly, in case of the geodetic surveying, uh, we call it as geodetic triangle. The geodetic triangle. This is also called as spherical triangle. We have to consider the sides are arc of sphere rather than the straight line. The condition with regards to the angles in spherical triangle is that the sum of the angle must be equal to 180 degree in addition to the spherical axis. So, what is in my spherical axis? A spherical axis phi is the amount by which the sum of the angles of the spherical triangle exceeds 180 degree. Spherical axis depends upon the area of the spherical triangles. If the sides of the spherical triangle are less than 3.5 kilometers, the spherical axis is ignored. The spherical axis is ignored. However, in most of the triangular observation, the sides are larger than this value, the spherical axis should be taken in the account. Spherical axis is approximately 1 second for every 196.75 square kilometer. Spherical axis is equal to the area into 180 degree divided by pi r square where the r is radius of the earth and area is the spherical triangles. Then we see the area of the spherical triangles. For determination of the area of the spherical triangles, it is assumed to be considered the triangles is uh, triangle is approximately as a plane triangles and no serious error is caused by this assumption. By, uh, the area can be calculated from the following formula. Area is equal to 1 half uh, a square sin b sin c divided by sin a. If you see in these spherical triangles a b and c a is the known sides area of the spherical triangle a b c are the observed angle of the spherical triangles and spherical triangle is the triangle formed by three greater circle then sides of the spherical triangles okay knowing the one sides and the angles of the spherical triangle the remaining sides can be calculated using any one of the following methods First is the spherical trigonometry method, second by D, Delembris method, third is the Legendre's method. So see one by one. Uh, spherical trigonometrical methods. Spherical trigonometry knowing one sides and angles of the spherical triangles, the remaining sides can be calculated from the formula of the spherical triangles. If you see that let A, B, lay, let A is the known side and AS, BS, CS be the adjusted spherical triangle. Let this alpha, beta and gamma be the central angle suspended by the arc of A, B and this is C. So we can calculate the central angle that is this arc length divided by R as arc length is equal to R into R into alpha. R is the radius of the earth. So all that therefore uh, r into uh, pi by 180 where alpha is the where alpha is the suspended angles between the arcs and r is the radius of the earth 6370 kilometers and the remaining central angles can be calculated by the same by the same way and uh, if you see that if you see that b beta is equal to 180 b by pi r similarly gamma is equal to we can find out 180 c divided by pi r then another methods of the spherical trigonometry by delembris methods in delembris methods the three station a b c are join the chord the plane angles are the angles between these chord let a p b sub x p c sub x p be the plane angles the following steps should be adopted to determine the length.
knowing the arc length of any sides bc that is a we called as then say bc is equal to a calculate the central angle alpha previously as we know calculated 180a divided by pi r with the central angle alpha calculate the chord length a dash as a dash is equal to 2r sin alpha by 2 similarly we can find out the beta dash a dash sin uh, similarly you can find out the b dash similarly you can find out the c dash so from the chord length a dash the plane angles calculate the other chord length b dash and c dash similarly from the chord length calculate the uh, corresponding central angle beta and gamma so beta is equal beta is equal to r sin b dash divided by 2r gamma is equal to 2 sin inverse c dash upon 2r calculate the length of the arc or sides of the spherical triangle as b and c okay then the last method is the legendary's method so this method is based on upon the legendary's theorem which is stated as in any spherical triangle if each of the angle is diminished by one third of the spherical axis the sine of these angles is proportional to the length of the opposite sides and the triangle is treated as the plane triangle provided the sides are small compared to the radius of the sphere if you see that this let a sub x p b sub x p and c sub x are the spherical uh, are the reduced angles then we can calculate the uh, uh, knowing the one sides a we can calculate the uh, b and c uh, that b is equal to a sin b sub x p divided by sin a p c is equal to a sin a sin cp divided by sin ap so by using the that theorems we can find out the all other sides by knowing one sides thank you